Hey everyone! Can you believe we are doing our final Animal Artist Collective video of 2018? If you're new, the Animal Artist Collective is a group of artists who run a YouTube channel who are deeply passionate about animals and animal-based art. We make videos every other month based around a theme that you, the community, helps us pick. We are currently predominantly traditional artists and all of the originals created will be sold with at least 50% of the proceeds going toward animal conservation. This month, you guys wanted us to focus on animals living closer to the poles in the Arctic and Antarctic. We thought this snowy theme was perfect with the holidays right around the corner. Since this is our last AAC video of the year, we also wanted to invite some extra guests to go out with a bang. Joining us this round is Jeanette, Arlisha, and Hajra. Please make sure to check them out along with all our regular members participating this month. All links and more info about the group and participation link down in the description. Okay, with the intro done, I can tell you more about what I worked on this round. When considering what animals I could focus on for this habitat, I had a sudden and fairly detailed idea of what I wanted to do. This doesn't happen super often, and it usually makes me start off more confident about the piece than I may want to be. What I mean by that is I have such a clear idea that the road to get there mistakenly feels much easier than it will be. I'm not sure if any of you else feel that way with certain projects. My mind got a little ambitious and thought I would be able to throw in some newer to me mediums and paint a landscape and background that was very new to me with no problem. My idea was to have a snowy owl flying at night among the trees with the northern lights or aurora borealis shining in the sky. All those individually wouldn't be too much, but all together was a bit more of a challenge. That also made the light source and what things would be lighter or darker in the piece a little bit more of a challenge as well. I realized all this when I made a couple initial thumbnails and had no idea what shape I wanted for the composition, how the owl should be placed in the composition, or how to even paint the northern lights let alone what colors they actually were. I ended up deciding to turn on the camera to document more of the before sketch phase and experimentation. You can see some of that experimentation here in my sketchbook off to the side. All that ended up being way too much extra footage to add into this video, so I decided to make a bonus video. It will include me sort of walking you through my thought process and reasons why I make particular decisions when sketching and experimenting with color, as well as using gouache a little bit more and combining mediums. Right now my plan is to release this video to my patrons soon and possibly make it public later on since I'm just not really sure if those kinds of videos are interesting to you guys. I'd love to make more process and behind the scenes videos when I can if that is something the community here would like. So let me know down below if that is something that you're interested in and I can try to make that a priority for the channel in general. All that being said, I'll be doing more and more updates in general over on my Patreon that you can follow along for free in case you don't want to miss anything. Needless to say, I experimented a lot before even starting my sketch, but I think incorporating more care in the planning phases of my pieces, especially if I can make it more routine, will ultimately help me improve my skills so much faster. So I mentioned that I just sort of knew that I wanted to do an owl, but realized painting a white animal in watercolor could be quite difficult, especially if I wanted the sky to be quite flowy and use the best assets that watercolor has to offer. That meant painting the owl in with white paint after the fact. I chose to break out the white gouache I have from Arteza. They actually include two whites in the set I was sent, which is super useful for gouache. 
and I felt like sticking with the one color would be a good way to sort of ease my way into learning gouache a bit better. I also really liked the juxtaposition of the texture I could get from the gouache and the watercolor on the paper. I then decided to add details to the wings and face with colored pencil, a dry medium, which wouldn't disturb the reactivation nature of regular gouache paints. This also added a really unique texture as well. As always, I'll have affiliate links down below in the description if you're curious about the exact products that I'm mentioning or using here and would like to possibly help support the channel with a purchase. You know the holidays are coming up pretty soon and art supplies are a really fun gift to receive. But anyway, Check out the description for more details if you're interested. Now, I wanted to go into more detail about the animal itself, including general facts and symbolism, since I would love to share that sort of information more in these videos. I want to first mention the charity that will receive half the funds from the sale of this piece. I'm choosing to support the Defenders of Wildlife this round, and I'll have their link down below if you'd like more information or to make a donation yourself. I actually found their site very useful for researching the snowy owl. So currently the snowy owl, also known as the arctic owl and the great white owl among many other names, is among the largest North American owl species and while they are far more common in the northern US states and most of Canada and even farther north, they can even be found as far south as parts of California, Texas, and Florida. Their population at any given point is closely correlated with their main prey, lemmings, and unlike other owl species, they primarily hunt during the daytime. Snowy owls usually mate for life as well, and the males are almost completely white and get whiter with age, whereas the females usually have dark bars or spots like the ones I end up drawing here on this one. Since they live in such cold areas, snowy owls are among the heaviest owls due to their extra feathers they need to keep warm. Now on to some fun symbolism around the snowy owl. Owls and birds in general hold a lot of symbolic meaning, usually stemming from the ability for the animal to fly. Many cultures have seen owls as symbols of ascension of the soul to higher levels of thought and consciousness. The snowy owl is regarded as having a connection to magic and the mysteries of the universe. This might have been the reasoning for the decision for Hedwig in Harry Potter to be a snowy owl. Another owl you may recognize from pop culture might be Owl from Winnie the Pooh. Him and numerous other owls are strongly associated with having wisdom. There is also a strong association with the moon cycles and even fertility since most owls are only active at night. It's interesting how the snowy owl sets itself apart with its stark white coloring and its activity being predominantly during the day. While many hold owl symbolism in a positive regard, there have been, there have been cultures who have associated the owl and particularly its cry with war and an omen of death. Many who regard the owl as a meaningful symbol to them in their lives claim it brings them wisdom to see what they do not know and the animal coming to you suddenly could signify a big change coming in your life sort of like the death of your old self as you enter into a new chapter of your life i have always enjoyed owl symbolism and just being in the presence of an owl has always made me feel calmer Hearing the coo of an owl in the forest while camping has always triggered a feeling of being grounded and connected to the earth. Although I'm unsure if I've actually encountered a snowy owl specifically. I'm actually pretty sure I haven't since they tend to be much quieter than their nocturnal brothers and sisters. 
So there are a few facts about owls and some specific to this type of owl, although a lot of the symbolism gets lumped together. All that being said, is there anything I missed about the symbolism or maybe some facts that you know about the snowy owl that I just didn't have time to cover in this video? Make sure to comment down below and let me know what some of those things might be. So here is my final piece. I'd like to remind everyone that I do have this original for sale in my Etsy shop. Check out the link down below. I know there's a lot down there, but <laughs> if you are interested in purchasing this and helping to contribute to charity to help protect animals like the snowy owl, check out the information about the Defenders of Wildlife charity as well. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and you're interested in videos like this. I also like to do a lot of different videos about kind of the life of an artist, navigating mental health issues, and I specifically like to focus on self-care for self-employed artists and just creative folks in general. Remember to check out all of the other participants. We have a lot of different videos for you to get through. I'll have a link to the playlist of this round as well as all the videos we have done as a part of the collective since January. Please make sure to check out our Facebook page as well. That is where we post our polls so you can help us decide what we should be focusing on any particular month. We actually plan on switching it up a little bit. This year we ended up doing habitats and each of our members would pick a different animal within a particular habitat and we are going to be shifting to a little bit of a different theme for next year so make sure to check out the Facebook group to find out more information. We also have a Twitter and Instagram and if you have unofficially participated make sure to use the hashtag or tag us Animal Artists Collective so we can see the pieces that you've created. Thank you so so much again for all the support we've received this year. It has been so fun to see the evolution of a group like this and all of the amazing support that has poured out for this group. That being said, that's the end of my video. Make sure to go check out everybody else's. But as always, I hope you have a creatively fulfilled day and I will see you next time. Bye guys.